We're in a series, a brand new series today, which I've called Think or Not to Think. Say that with me. Think or, or Not to Think. A little series. Got school starting up in a week or so. I like to sometimes think that way. Where they about kids going back? How about some learning, some education? Well, how about us? How can we better think? Make better decisions, better choices. And what I'm doing, I'm going through the Scriptures, the New Testament. Probably stay in the New Testament. Looking at thinking and thought and mind and what did Jesus say and what did the, the uh, Apostle Paul and the epistles, what did they have to say about thinking and our thought life? Because there's a ton there. How many battle with your thought life? A little bit. How many make some bad decisions sometimes? How many think about stuff you wish you didn't think about and shouldn't think about? Well, I'm going to start off easy on you today. Here we go. Think, oh no, he's going to make me think. No, I'm going to start off with not thinking today. How about that? You feel good about that? I think I can maybe do good since I don't have to think. All right, let's start off with not to think today. So a little series called Think. Let's look at it. Here we go. We're rolling. If you're here visiting for the first time, this is how we do it. We use a big screen. You can get this PowerPoint yourself right on our website click on it you can see all the notes and everything and then even the message itself is online as well but here we go so you can review Romans 12 are you ready are you okay when I say think you're not going to sleep are you oh my god I gotta think no you're not gonna have to think so stay awake here we go I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your... Now, only a few of you are helping me, though. That's not good. Come on. That you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, we quote that a lot. I love those two verses. But here's a verse that gets left out a little bit. Verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that's among you, say it with me, not to think of himself, say it with me, more highly than he ought to, but to what? Think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Let's pop that verse up again, right, so we can memorize a little bit. I want you to see it. Might not get it all down. But I'd, like to, I'd like to go over it a couple of times. For I say, let me just, I'm going to get you to a certain part. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that's among you. And start right there with me. Help me try to get this down your head. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think, let's try it again. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think, what's that mean? When you're thinking about yourself, don't be thinking like a drunk man, thinking you're all that because you ain't. When you're thinking you're all that more highly of yourself, you just remember this. You're thinking like a drunk man. Who are you? What you been sipping? What you been drinking talking about yourself so highly, thinking like that? You understand that verse now, yes or no? Come on. Say it again with me. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think. That's what we want to do in this series. Learn to think a little bit better. Okay? Obviously, God loves you. He gave his one and only son for you. But he'll reject you if you're full of pride or if I'm full of pride, if we think more highly than we ought to think of ourselves. Is that understood? Say, be right, quite honest with you, a lot of other people will reject you too. So it's not a good thing to do. So let's go now with the message. Say it with me. Come on, a little volume. Think, baby. Come on. Let's think. That's what we're going to do. What does think mean? Okay, I know you know what it means, but I look up stuff. I learn things when I look up stuff. It means to have in your mind. If you think of something, it's up there. It's up there. It means to employ your mind. When you think, you're putting your mind to what? To work. You're working your mind. It means to focus attention and what? Effort on something. The word think means to believe. Hmm. 
So thinking then takes work, it takes effort, and requires what? Hang in here with me. Thinking takes work and effort and requires attention. Thinking ends up with what? One more time. Thinking ends up with what? I know I'm driving you crazy, but we're going somewhere. So hang in here with me. Thinking ends up with believing. And then you store those beliefs in your mind. And you might, well, good, that's what it's all about, right? Sometimes. But some things shouldn't take up space in my mind. Did you know I have to work to get them up there? It takes effort, it takes me focusing, it takes attention, and then those things I put up there become my what? My beliefs. Say that with me. We're going to say this about five times. Some things shouldn't take up space in my mind. One more time. Some things shouldn't take up space in my mind. I'm talking about not thinking today. Some things shouldn't take up space in my mind. Come on, two more times, you'll live. Some things shouldn't take up space in my mind. One more time. Some things shouldn't take up space in my mind. Because it's hurting me. And, and that's not God's will for my life. I want to talk about that today. Today's message is not to think. Y'all with me so far? So you understanding a little better now where I think I might be headed today? I'm going to talk about some things shouldn't take up space in my mind. And we're going to look at the Scripture. God's holy word. And we're going to see what he has to say for us. Let's look at it. When you read your New Testament, you'll see Jesus saying, Think not. Think not. Think not. That's the King James. It means don't think. Doesn't mean he doesn't want you to think. But it means certain things you ought not think about. You understand? He also says, Take no thought. Take no thought. Take no thought. Don't spend time thinking or letting your thought life go here. That's where we're headed. Think not, take no thought. Say those two things with me. Think not, take no thought. Think not, take no thought. So we're going straight to the Word of God, and we're going to learn not to think. Now you might say, Pastor, I don't even know what you're talking about. You're just crazy. Well, there's a lot of people in the room that understand exactly where I'm going. And some of the probably people in this room have been almost driven to the edge of insanity because things you thought and you shouldn't be thinking. Let's look at them. All right? Let's look at them. Here we go. Think not. And I just went through the Bible. I could have put them in some fancy order. I didn't even do, mess with the order a whole lot. I just went through the Bible. First one, think not that Jesus came to send peace. This is what he said. Think not... Is that what he said? That's what he said. He said, think not. Right there it is, right in front of you. Think not, Jesus speaking, that I'm come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a what? Did you know what you ought not think? You ought not think, oh, God's, God, is, God is love. And God is just love. And all roads lead to heaven. And you know, it's okay. What anybody believes is okay. Did you know you ought not think that way? Did you know Jesus Christ didn't come to this earth and die on the cross so people could just believe anything they want to and get up any way they want to? Do you understand that? Yes or no? And don't think that your faith isn't going to cost you something. You understand? Don't think that following Christ and believing in Christ might not affect your relationship sometimes with family and friends. And a relationship with others in your life. People you let close to you. Don't think that they might not think you're a nut. You understand, yes or no? He didn't come to die on the cross. Yeah, for, yeah, he wanted to save you from your sins, and me too, that's for sure. But he didn't come so he could pat you on the head. He, he said, look, if, if I suffer and I'm your master, don't, don't, don't be surprised if you suffer too. And so therefore, when something bad happens, or somebody says something, we're just devastated because you're thinking the wrong thoughts anyway. You're thinking weak, mamby-pamby thoughts that there's not going to be some tough things you're going to have to face in your Christian life. Y'all listening or not? 
So you're setting yourself up for defeat. Let's look at another one. Think not that Jesus came to destroy the law. This is what Jesus said. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. So the first five books of the Bible, the law, the Pentateuch, the commandments, or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy the law, but to what? Fulfill the law. It's funny. It's not, it's not good thinking to think that now you're a believer in Christ. Or I hear people say this. You know, you just basically throw out the Old Testament. You know, the things that God says, the Ten Commandments. Oh, you don't live according to the Ten Commandments. You know what? You should really, really, really appreciate the Ten Commandments. Did you know that? Yes or no? Okay? And the things, the law. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. The law is good for us. The law of the Scriptures, the teaching of the Scriptures, those hard teachings, they're a schoolmaster for us. They teach us. You understand? Yes or no? Don't, don't, don't believe that. Don't believe that kind of teaching that it doesn't matter anymore. You ever heard that? The Old Testament doesn't matter. The law doesn't matter anymore. People even say just to, so they don't have to give anything. They don't want to be a giver to God's work. They'll say, ah, that's in the Old Testament, that giving stuff, that tithing. You're right, it is in the Old Testament. It's not preached much in the New Testament. That's true. And you hardly ever hear me preach ever around here about tithing whatsoever. I think you ought to give because you love God. I think you ought to give because you have something to give. I think you ought to give because you have a good place. You have a work. You're a worker. You have a check coming in, something to help you. I think you ought to give because you, you thank God your creator. You, you realize everything good thing comes from him and you love him. You see what I'm saying? That's just a little example. Instead of excuse making, don't think that's been thrown in the trash. You're listening. Don't let yourself think that way. Have I lost you yet? It's going to get, it's going to get more personal. Keep looking. Think not that Jesus accuses you before the Father. He said this, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There's one that accuses you. Say it with me. Even in whom you trust. What does that mean for us today? Here's what it means to me. What he was saying is Jesus was speaking to, to the Pharisees and what have you, and, and they were giving him a hard time because of his teaching. And he's like, look, don't, hey, I'm not going to accuse you to the Father. Moses does. What he was saying is his law, the, the books that he wrote, his teaching. Here's what, here's, what, here's, what, here's what the point is. Listen, guys, don't think that Jesus is going to... Jesus died for you. He loves you. You're the one who screws up your life. You condemn yourself. God doesn't. You're condemned already, the Bible says. You understand what I just said or not? Oh, God says that, man. He, he's picking on me. No, he loves you. He gave his life for you. You pretty much screwed up your own life. You make, up, you make your own bad decisions. He loves you. Don't start thinking. That's Satan in your mind getting you to think God's a bad God. He's accusing me, picking on me. God, man. Now, no. God's a good God. He loves you to pieces. You're the one who's making the bad choices. You understand? Okay, keep going. So don't you think that's good to not think those three things we just talked about? Say, sure, they're not having space in your mind. Keep looking. Now nah, it's going to get a little more personal. How about this one? Think not that you what? Lest you what? One more time. Think not that you, lest you Wherefore, let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. Don't be thinking you all that. How many known people thought they were all that? And they end up not being all that. Say, telling me what to do? Say, holier than thou? Say, we don't want that at Fellowship Church. Hey, it's, it's goofy anyway. Why not think that? It's not saying think like you're always falling or you're never firm in your life or secure. It's not teaching that. But don't, te don't, don't, don't think that you, you have it all together, man. Lest you what? You see somebody else do something. 
And you jump on your little high horse and your little bandwagon. You're going to put them down. You're going to talk about it. You're going to run your mouth and gossip about what they did. You hear what they did? Yeah, they, we might be talking about you next month. Say, better to keep your mouth shut. How about pray for somebody like that? Say, use your time better. That's what this is teaching. They don't need to be in our thinking that I'm standing there. No. Think not what? That you're sufficient in yourself. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of what? We ought not think that we're self-sufficient people. The Bible teaches every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from God, the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Anything I have good in my life, he gave it to me. No, no, I earned it. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm the man. Master. Really? I just wouldn't think like that if I was you. Amen. Think that your sufficiency is of God. You roll out of the bed in the morning, you breathe that air. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I love praying in the truck with uh, the guys, and I love uh, praying. Well, well, I love praying with all of them, but often Jeff Clemens will mention creation. Clyde mentioned it last week, just in his prayer, just seeing something that God created. It's good to give God credit when you see things and see the ocean and see the sky and see the birds and, and see how you're physically, you're, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. It's good to give God credit for that. Not think you're self-sufficient. Yes or no? Okay. Think not. Say it with me. That you're what? When you're what? That's ugly. Are you telling me I'm nothing, Pastor? No, the Bible did. Look at it. For if a man think himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. Amen? I mean, I think of this thought sometimes. What would I be like, and what would you be like, if we were born in a whole other country? Maybe in a, in, 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 in a tribe or something. Not growing up in America. Not hearing what we heard. Not being taught in schools. What would, we be, what would we be like today? Guess what you would be like? Let me tell you what you'd be like. A savage. Do you understand that or not? That's who you'd be. Oh, no, I would have my pretty little dress and my high heels. You'd have feet that are about rotting off your, your, your legs if you're living over there and you're eating a cup of rice and you've got nothing to eat. You've already buried a bunch of kids. You're blessed living in this country. You understand? And it's not because we're something... It's because he's everything. And his hand has blessed us here. Did that make any sense to anybody in the room? But it makes good sense to me. Don't think you something. But when you get to the place in your career where you look back and you say, yeah, look at what I did. What, didn't, didn't Jesus give a story about that? Say, in the Bible. What did he say? He said, look, look what I've done. I've built this and I've done this and, and I'll build me bigger barns. You know what the Bible says? And so I can store up everything I've got. And then he said this, and I'll say to my soul, say it with me, eat, drink, and be what? Uh-oh. Keep reading. Jesus says, thou. You know what he says, the word? Fool. For tonight, your life is required of you. Then who shall those things, what, be? Not yours. Amen. Are y'all listening today? Am I wearing you out? Think not that you, say it with me, will receive anything from God without what? Faith. Look what the Bible says. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally. So God will help you with your thinking. And upbraids not. And he's certainly not going to get on to you for asking for wisdom. <laughs> not going to correct you. It'll be given to you, he says. But let him ask in what? Nothing wavering. For he that wa wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the winds and tossed. Keep looking. 
For let not that man what? That he shall receive anything of the Lord. For a double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. So think not. You are whistling Dixie and definitely smoking something if you think you're going to get anything from God without faith. You're not. It's impossible for a man to please God. Hebrews 6. No, Hebrews 11, verse 6. It's impossible for a man to please God without one word it says. Say it. Faith. You can't think like that. You must have faith. Amen? Well, I'll just work my way to heaven. Or I'll just do... Don't even let it think and let your mind go there. Huh. Absolutely not. Darling, we ain't going to make it through this without some faith. Amen? Young ones, it's going to take us getting together and having some what? Faith. Amen? Keep looking. Not to think. Hope you're learning something. Now we're going to go now. Here we go. We're moving still. The Bible's got a lot of st stuff to say on this. Take no thought. Say that with me. So we said think not. That's what Jesus said. Think not, think not, think not, think not, think not. Then in the epistles as well. How about this one? Say it with me. Take no thought. One more time. Take no thought. Don't waste your time thinking about it. Take no What did he say? Jesus. Wow. Wow. Look at this one. He says take no thought for your what? What do we do? That's all we ever do. Jesus said, don't take no thought for your life. Wherefore I say unto you, take no what? For your what? What you shall eat, what you shall drink, yet what for your body, what you're going to put on it? Is not the life more than meat? Is the body not more than the clothes? What's wrong with you people, he's saying? Behold the fowls of the air. Don't you watch them? Look at them flying free. Look at them. Woo! They don't sow not, they sow not, they don't reap, they don't gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father does what? Feeds them. Are you not much better than them? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? I'm just, if you're short, you're going to be short. That's just the way it is. Quote me. If you're tall, oh, I wish I could be shorter. Ain't happening. I will tell you this. You can work on your weight. Amen? But even there, we go crazy. And we spend way too much time thinking about it. And why do you take thought for raiment, for your clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. They're not all messed up. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these lilies, man. It's incredible. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, burn up, shall he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little what? Faith. Therefore, take no saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we be clothed? But I'm going to talk about this in just a second. But honestly, guys, that consumes most of our thinking right here. You think about what you talk about. You think about the plans you're making. You think about what you're doing. It's most of it's tied up right there. Come on. For after all these things do the Gentiles or the heathen seek or unbelievers. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Why are you, why are you spending so much time in your head on this stuff, Jesus is saying? A verse like this tells a story again in Luke 12. I like this verse. And seek not what you shall eat or what you shall drink. I like this last part. Neither be ye of what? One more time. Neither be ye of what? So this is a big issue. I hope you're not going to sleep on me. Listen, this is huge. Of the message, this is big for me. So take no thought for your what? One more time. Take no thought for your... And Jesus broke it down this way. What you eat, what you drink, and what you wear. And I just got a couple of thoughts. I didn't write any of this stuff now. But this is what I'm thinking. How much time we consume on what we're eating. Now, I'm not talking about what restaurant necessarily you go into. I'm talking about 
We spend so much time worrying about our diet. Are y'all listening? I'm not saying you shouldn't be concerned about health and stuff like that, but not consumed like you are. Or thinking you got to look this sort of skinny way on TV because that's what all the models are like. So I got to look like this. I just, I just, I'm crazy, crazy, crazy. You drive us all up the wall. Are you hearing me today? Spending all this time. And look, you know why I can preach and holler like this? Because I've done it and do it. I'm an idiot. I'm serious. I'm serious, guys. Is that your life? Is that what your life has come down to? Is that really what your life has come down to? Is that the meaning of your life now? I'd rather you not go out to eat with me and tell me not what to eat when I'm sitting there. Are you listening or not? Oh, no, that's got like this many calories. How about, how about these knuckles? How many, how many fingers are in your face? <laughs> Count them. Are you listening? I know I'm being ugly. I'm losing people. I care about diet. Well, they're smiling at me, so maybe they're not mad. And then you start thinking it. And because you might be a little bit heavier, you start thinking you don't measure up and you're not important and you're not loved and you're not everything. You are everything. You're everything to God. He loves you to pieces. Okay? Yeah, we can all. We, we should work on our health, guys. But you get to the place where you start thinking these kind of thoughts and it's starting to consume your thought. You're telling me that's godly. It ain't godly. It's pathetic and you ought to stop it. Okay? Let's preach it to the choir here, guys. What you drink, that's the, sort of the same idea. What you going to drink? And then this one right here, the last one. What you going to put on? What you going to wear? Go back to savage. You were a savage. You'd be glad to have a Walmart, wouldn't you? Say. But now that's beneath you. Is it? Say. Shame on you if it is. Excuse me. You understand what I'm saying or not if I lost you this morning? Hey, if you can have the nice, buy the nice. It doesn't make you better. It doesn't make you better. You were loved before you put that mess on your back. God loved you. If you had nothing, he loves you. You understand? Say. And if it takes that to get other people in your life, lose them. If it means, oh, i got to have this. Hey, look, I love going consignment shopping. I love it especially. I love seeing people pay a fortune for something. I come in and just get it for nearly nothing. I like buying quality. Don't get me wrong. But being consumed that I've got this or I've got this shoes. I was at a store in Colorado. Consignment store, no mind you. You were there. You didn't see the shoes, though, but you might have. Here we go. Uh-oh, I just split my pants. <laughs> How about if I do this right here? I'm not quitting. Maybe I should worry about what I eat. I'm sorry. You better stop laughing at me. Who is running to my house getting me a pair of pants? <laughs> no one? You're pathetic. Hey, give me this chair. You want to tuck a rag back there? Okay, here we go. There we go.
Maybe you shouldn't get your clothes from secondhand stores. <laughs> Welcome to fellowship. There we go. There we go. Anyway, I'm at this consignment store. Elise asked to see the red shoes sitting up here in the back. They're not out with all the other shoes. Why? Because they're ugly. Why can't they be out? How much? Consignment store. $1,200. Because they're a certain kind of shoe made by a certain kind of fella in New York. Well, he can stay in New York. You understand? Do what you want to. Don't be consumed with this stuff. Jesus said that. Is that right? That ought not be your life, what you eat and your diet and, and work it out. I'm working out. I'm working out. How do you mean I'm going to work it out? I'm going to work it out. But I mean, how are you, though? Well, I've been working out. Do you have another thought? I mean, is there something else I can think of? No, I've been working out. Do you understand how that becomes your life, yes or no? Or tell him we get together and the latest thing you can talk about is everything you're just wearing. I mean, well, anyway, i got to go. All right, let's keep moving. If I get up, somebody warn me. Huh? Do what? Don't talk to me. Take no thought. Here we go. What's the next one? For tomorrow. Jesus said, don't take thought for tomorrow. What does that mean? Is Jesus telling us to be irresponsible, not to worry about the future, not to plan? Of course he's not saying that. How many worry about things that ain't happened? Can I see your hand? How many have things happen and you think it's going to get worse and it's, you know, you just, you worry like that. Do you understand? And it consumes part of your mind and you become, that becomes part of your belief system. And it's wearing you out. Because thinking takes work, it takes effort, it takes focus, it takes attention, and then it becomes your belief. You understand? He says, take no, therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. I love this part. Jesus helped me so much when he wrote this in the Bible. Say it with me. Sufficient unto today is the what? If you want to have, you want to have evil and you want to think evil, there's plenty of it to think about today. Without being consumed about what's going to happen tomorrow, there's enough problems today that you can tackle. Why don't you tackle some of those problems today instead of thinking about more on tomorrow that you've got to tackle and you're just killing yourself. You're hurting yourself. What if? Well, well what if? Blah, 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 what if? Well, what if? I can't do a whole lot about it, can you? It's crippling you. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek God when? Today. Today. We're talking about not thinking about certain things. Not thinking about tomorrow. So often, I put this up. We put Philippians 3.19 before Philippians 4.19. Why did I put that? Because I love the book of Philippians. Look at what Philippians 3.19 says. Philippians 3.19, talking about thinking, whose end is their destruction, whose God is their what? Whose glory, look at me, is their what? Who mind earthly what? Who's always thinking about stuff and today and I got to do this and I did this. Mm -hmm. That's Philippians 3.19. Look at Philippians 4.19. This is the way we should think. But my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Isn't that just sort of more relaxing? Say, did, did y'all relax a little? Who's God in the belly? You know. Whose glory is a shame? Who mind only things? I got wore out with that verse. But my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. So the Bible says, and Jesus says, don't take, don't, don't be consumed with tomorrow. Live today. You know what tomorrow is? Here's something I say, been saying it for years. Tomorrow is the favorite day of the lazy man. Can you say that with me? Tomorrow is the favorite day of the lazy man. Why not do something today? Why not live in the now? Why not live in the 24 that you have? And don't think about that. That's what Jesus is saying. Taking no thought, we're done with the message. I'll remain seated the rest of the time. 
Taking no thought takes work. How many, as the message progressed today, you felt like you got some work to do? Me too. It's going to take work for you not to think. It's going to take effort for you not to think. think. It's going to take focus and attention for you not to think. I love Philippians also. Forgetting those things which are what? Behind and pressing forth to those things which are before. I press for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See how that thinking works better? We're almost done. 2 Corinthians 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. These aren't tangible weapons we can hold. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The battle is in our mind. That's where we struggle. That's where I struggle. And then this verse, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every what? To the obedience of Christ. So often a message about thinking and think not, we probably thought I was going to talk about, oh, bad, dirty thoughts, not thinking. And yeah, you need to work on that too. Excuse me, okay? But so much of it, no, 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 no. It's not that. So much of our other thoughts are killing us. So two things that verse teaches, cast down and take captive. Say that with me as we're finishing today. Cast down and take captive. I can't take charge of your thoughts for you. You're going to have to do that. Some of this not thinking stuff, you're going to have to do. You're going to have to cast it down, and you're going to have to take it captive. You're going to have to take charge of your head. Two things. Say that with me. I will cast down my imaginations. How many you worry about stuff, worry about things in the future? It nearly killed you, and it didn't even happen. Can I see your hand? <laughs> Isn't that crazy say? What if I, what if I, what if I, what if you live today and smile and have a good day? Cast down those imaginations. Doesn't mean you shouldn't plan, doesn't mean you shouldn't think, but so much of what's up there shouldn't be up there. Number two, I will say it with me, take captive my, one more time, I will take, it's my job. It's my job. So, the message today, not to think. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning at the beautiful Lemon Bay Performing Arts Center, located on the campus of Lemon Bay High School at 2201 Placida Road in Inglewood, Florida. Our early worship service begins at 9 a.m. and the main worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. Between these two worship services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you're looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would like to just pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fellowshipinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.